Hey guys, this is Internet Personality Vangelis here in a Toronto hotel room, and I thought I'd kill some time uh, when I wanted to just get away from people and enjoy the room by building some mini pla. And I thought that I would document it because I like watching people build models on YouTube. It's a weird vicarious thing, and I thought I'd see if anyone else out there is into that kind of weird vicarious thing. So check it out. It's time for a let's build. The mini pla go say great. I don't use many tools for this trade. Just got me some clipper nippers, my blue knife, which happens to have a mag light on it, which will be so totally helpful for this review if it stays on, and my modeling knife, and my little triangular file thing, which is totally clogged up with plastic, and I think it's bleeding some all over the table while I do this. Anyway, let's slice open one of these boxes. I'm gonna do these in order, because I'm fastidious like that. There's a pull tab here, but <laughs> who uses pull tabs? Let's get over the top, because the instructions for this are on the inside of the box, and that means I basically have to pull this entire box open in order to see them. Uh, it's one of the tricky things about mini pla, although I'm sure it saves on some dollars, uh, like a dollar tops, by not having uh, printed paper instructions. Just gotta hit up the perforation here, and I'll see how I'm supposed to put this together. Although I'm sure experienced gun pla, or really any modelers, would, would be able to suss this out on their own with their super gun pla senses, but for the rest of us, instructions. Oh, and these. You, you know about these by now. Uh, what's funny is, I said all this about paper instructions not being printed. They still print them for the actual transformation bits. So, I, I really don't get it. Also, there are these stickers. Um, barring things that aren't sculpted on, I probably won't be using all of these. Uh, I probably won't be using many of these, if any. Uh, but that's what they look like. Oh my god, two whole sprues of parts. This is intense. I don't know if I can handle this many pieces in my modeling career. Ah! So clipping parts, if you've never used nippers, by the way, don't don't use them like this. This is the dumb way to use them. Uh, you want to have the flat part up against the part you're clipping. Again, gun pla modelers probably already not only know this, but are probably scrutinizing my technique and thinking like, man, what what is that guy doing? Um, and then after you get them off, you can just grab... You can use the knife if you want, but... Uh, I always just prefer grabbing the flat side of my file and having just a little go at it. Smooth out all those bits and pieces of flash. This is terribly interesting, isn't it? Don't worry. I'm only showing you this once. So you can just pretend I'm doing this on the rest of the parts. B... 9... Yay! Be fiber! Now I'm sure another question coming to mind is, hey, Internet Personality Evangelist, why are you heaping this much work onto a mini plot kit that, when bought in wholesale, costs you, like, 15 bucks? Um, well, I guess 25 if you're buying it on its own. Because I want to get my money's worth out of it, and doing this much work for something that, you know, to many, uh, does not require this much work, it makes me excited. Uh, it, it makes it more of an adventure for me. And that gives me a little bit more of a sense of satisfaction when it's complete. That and I, I, I want to paint the whole thing too, so that's how it goes. So now following the diagram pictured here, I will assemble these pieces thusly. Oh man, I think this jaw goes in here. Oh god. Uh, oh, I did it! It's just, oh no, it fell out. It's just like the picture! Hooray! Okay, now it looks like the diagram. I had to put both those pegs into holes. And to close this up, and bring to an end the first chapter of this amazing, amazing model build video, we're gonna clasp the faces together, and ladies and gentlemen, Mini Pla Dragon Header. Oh man, this was so worth the, 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 the however much I paid for it, I can't remember right now. These little winglets have just tiny bits of flash right inside this ridge. That's a pain. But once it's gone, oh, how sweet it is. How sweet it is. Time for some head assembly. Now, I know this probably doesn't look all that impressive right now, uh, what with it being a giant wad of red. But hopefully, once I get some paint on this little boy, 
uh, he'll look a bit better. Now there there are stickers, you know, as I said and as I showed you, and there there is in fact a giant sticker just for his face, which uh, if it's anything like the Goonger or Shinkenger stickers, um, it'll probably actually, if you use a toothpick to depress all the details in, it would actually hug the contours of the face sculpt quite nicely. So don't shirk the stickers, they are actually very nicely done. I'm just uh, crazy enough to want to paint this, so that's what you get. By the way, when I'm filing, I generally like to go just in one direction like this. Uh, I find that that makes things smooth out a lot easier and avoids having too many scratch marks. That's just me though. I'm a noob. Look at that, it's being all particular. Make sure that you put this in, in this orientation. I do find it interesting how the header system has been kinda replicated here, even though these are just like simple peg and hole things, the quote-unquote header connector points are their own separate components, at least in this part of the kit. And uh, I do want to paint these black, just, you know, show accuracy. Eh. Let's start building a torso. This is so exciting. It's, it's just like being a factory worker in China. Only, like, I'm not. I'm, a, I'm an adult in a hotel room. Clearly not using a hotel room as, you know, the good lord intended the hotel rooms to be used. That being for room parties and fornication. I think we're doing it right. I find even when the surface is a little bit round, I can still get some decent filing done to get all this flash off from, uh, from the frame. Uh, I really do recommend taking the time to do this. It can it can help clean up the model nicely, and just that little extra touch of smoothness makes it feel a lot less like the amount of money that it costs, and a lot more like it costs an extra dollar or two. I don't know. I really like filing this stuff off. It just makes me feel like I'm I'm getting it nice and clean and ready and cherry. And for everything I said about the headers being yellow, there's a there's a red port right there. Again, got to paint that black. Oh, exciting! Exciting! Oh! Yeah. Ooh, hey, it's a mechanism. That's kind of cool. You know, I'm glad they molded this all in yellow and everything, but at the same time, I'm... I'm thinking I'm probably gonna paint most of this stuff in gold. It's appreciated, though. You know, I was legitimately worried for a bit that the uh, the tail sword thing uh, would have a huge hollow space in it. Then I, you know, I noticed that there was this entire other piece to plug in. It's good to check the instructions, you know, before you start complaining, because now I have a nicely three-dimensional Gose sword. The whoa, whoa, whoa! Oh, oh, come on! It's time to jam things together. Ah, yeah. And making sure that the three spines are on top. Let's go. Oh, oh, oh! Good stuff. And finally, let's plug your noggin in place. Header on. Oh, okay, there we go. And go say dragon is now complete. Well, that's all you get in box one. Uh, guess we got to move on to box number four. Just imagine the poor Japanese kid whose parents only buy him these torturously one at a time, and he has to build number one, two, and three before he can get to number four, where he then gets the wings for his number one. That's just, uh, not proper cricket. DOS! STICKERS! By the way, I hope you like recycling, because you're gonna get four of these, most probably. We'll see, but I'm pretty sure you're gonna get four of these. Whoa, three sprues in three different colors! Well, we know which one we want to deal with first. That was exciting! Oh my god, can can you guess what we're gonna do no, oh, oh, oh! Gunpla! Minipla! Such adventure! Oh man. Now we have us a Gose Doragon! Look at all these header ports yearning for black paint. Ooh. That, that will be a different video, if it's a video at all. Let me know if you even want to see that.
Let's build us a new header. The fine alignment of tabs and slots can sometimes be a little bit trying. But once we have it all in place... Oh, that's satisfying! Look at the size of the maw on this thing. Omph. That's a header, by the way. A solid yellow header. There's stickers for the teeth, for sure. But, uh, painting? I wonder how many times I'm gonna say that. One thing to do when you pull these little wheels off the sprue is file them down a lot because they are kind of supposed to roll. So you should at least try to approximate their rolling ability. By the way, oh my god, no rubber treads? Oh, Bandai, oh. You do gotta do this twice. And you gotta actually do the, the wheels four times because, you know, four wheels is typically how things move around, but uh, it's a fairly solid little assembly when all is said and done. More header ports, good stuff. Whoa, that got a little crazy there. Oh man, we are now junctioning ball joint and peg joint. Man, dogs and cats living together. Let me tell you something about this. And we are good to go. The picture says yes. You know you've been building too many of these when you actually start to recognize the wedge that is otherwise known as the LOL why can't the DX have this knee joint component. Wheel. Wheel. Tread. And let's finish this off. Ooh. Oh, holy crap, this is actually kind of difficult. Um, those are a lot of holes to line up. Let me tell you something right now. We're good. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe that for now, our foray into yellow plastic is over. Time for some white. Son. Now this is two different models. Um, I suspect stickers and thus paint are to come into play here. And uh, another one of these. Let's have a look at the stick. Oh yeah, okay, I see where this is going. To the designer's continuing credit, this sprue is entirely Gosei Shark, while this sprue is entirely Gosei Phaonix. So, don't have to go mixing and matching. That's nice. You know, for everything I'm saying about the stickers being okay, uh, and they are, um, you really do, if you use the stickers, want to put them on with a lot of extra care. And by extra care, I mean using a toothpick and pushing them into all the different crevasses you can see uh, in the sculpting. Uh, because aside from the fact that, as I said, these stickers are often made to do that, uh, I think it's even more indicative on this white plastic, the, the sheer amount of, of detail in the sculpt that you could still take advantage of even if you use the stickers. By the way, check it out, it's uh, totally shark header. And he's got a thing in his mouth. It's kind of weird. The pictures on this thing really are useful. I mean, like, these instructions, aside from being printed on the inside of the box, uh, they accomplish a lot. Like, I know that this matches up to that. Uh, and as I said, you can still see even on this piece that there's a lot of sculpted detail on this thing that, you know, the, the model does encourage you to cover up with stickers. And I think that's, you know, it's, it's something you're free to do, but if you do it, at least press uh, the stickers into all these details. Okay, these header pieces have, uh, have come in several colors. I, I retract my previous statement about them only being in yellow. Uh, in my defense, it, it was an uneducated statement, and uh, I like to think that a lack of education is a, a valid defense in, in our current day and age of, of grassroots movements and, uh, and the internet. There's a lot of uh, text sculpted onto these things, little copyright stamps and whatnot. And again, one of the, the beautiest parts of having a, an inexpensive model kit is that I'm 
more confident in just scraping these numbers off with a knife. Uh, not, not at this point. I want to wait till I have more of a handhold because, you know, if I bleed all over the place, this will be an explicit rated YouTube video, and we can't have that. Okay, we're going to do this assembly line style. Uh, more moving parts, by the way. Um, I really do enjoy actually assembling these things for the sake of seeing how it all goes together. And uh, also, it, it helps you be aware of where connection points are uh, in terms of joints and all those sort of things. Although, there are still times with these mini plot kits when I'm putting them together and I, I still get kind of taken by surprise when something's able to move in a certain way. Even though I assembled it, I, I don't recall putting that joint together and all of a sudden, you know, whoa, hey, I've got an elbow. You know, it's, it's pretty darn interesting. And as for cases of these darned little upraised serial numbers, you can just Scrape them off. There'll be some imprintings left behind, but once you get this uh, heavy stuff out of the way, you can just head in there with your file and, and clean a bunch of it off yourself. I think this is about it. Yeah, here we go. Once you get all that stuff off, you can just get in here with the file. Smooth her out. I mean, technically one could do this to one's own mainline toys that are already assembled for them and such, but for some reason I feel a greater sense of security when doing this on a model kit that I'm putting together. So I also find it amusing that on a model kit I'm putting together, the uh, copyright stamps are still placed onto the pieces themselves and not onto spare areas on the frames. It's, uh, it's weird. It's like Bandai has to find one final way to, to take their little swing at us for avoiding the DXs. Incidentally, if you are an underage viewer who is uh, either too little or too immature to be handling uh, bladed items such as modeling knives, uh, ignore everything I just told you, because um, you're, to, you're going to cut yourself open as well as all of your friends and family. Now granted, if that's your goal, I can't stop you, but if your friends and family, uh, for instance, are sitting behind you while you're watching this, I just want to erase um, all of my own liability. Unless, of course, you do it in some kind of awesome serial killer style, because, I, I mean, I, I would love to be interviewed when they eventually do their biography on your crazy self. But but that aside, you know, be careful. Because, you know, you, you want to be a responsible person when you're handling knives. And I'm, I am, I'm a totally responsible person. <laughs> we are now on to our penultimate header with more of its finicky little pegs and tabs. But on the bright side, having just little finicky pegs and tabs means that by virtue of its snap-together kit nature, when I want to pry this back apart to adjust pieces or if I need to do so for a simpler painting, it's not too hard. Header. This uh, assembly of uh, a header port an extended uh, arch-like component wrapped in a thin cylindrical shell is a little bit of deja vu if you ask me. Uh, then again, that's just how Sentai design works. It's funny how them arms are a little bit alike. Okay, yeah, this is kind of a little bit identical. But, you know, that aside, it's uh, a bit of a fun build. I mean, it's simple. It's super, super simple. But, uh, in its simplicity, it's a fun way to kill an evening, you know? Knock this together and you get a superposable Sentai robot. You could do worse for a Sunday. Ah, back to the final triplicate assembly once again. Although these parts are a little bit rougher to get in pl um, Am I doing this backwards? Am I doing this backwards? I don't think I am. No, no, I'm not doing this backwards. The man is doing this backwards. You know, this whole three-pronged economy that we now live in is... Okay, I was doing it backwards. <clears throat> but, uh... 
now that I am doing it the right way around, the rest of this should be pretty easy. And we have us a Phoenix header. Box the final. This kind of becomes old hat after a while. You get used to, to pulling open both sides of a box and uh, it becomes kind of old to you, you know. Slicing its top and bottom, peeling out the insides. Let me peel your perforations from end to end. Oh, hey, instructions. The fourth. Where the blazes did this white plastic come from? And I really did get four of these. Sticker. We're on to the final stretch, ladies and gentlemen. We are plugging together a snake, a header. Did you know it took me a while to realize this was a snake? I don't know why. I kept looking at it thinking like, man, it's weird how they have like a, a bullet train with an animal head. It seems a little bit unthematic and little did I know the bullet train was in fact the body of a snake. Um, bit of an odd choice to me, but you know, I, I, I usually think of snakes as villainous creatures. Call me a, a bit of an Asakura fanboy. We got us some header, by the way. With a mouth and some fangs. Anyway, as I was saying, snakes I generally don't think of as heroic, but I guess it's a first time for everything. And in my case, this first time was uh, snake heroism. By the way, this, this is starting to feel really familiar. Although I'm, I'm thinking if I had assembled this in another direction, uh, I'd have been thinking that the tiger was feeling just a little bit similar. But uh, it's a fun build still. I, I like how everything's just kind of sticking together. There's no real frills at this point. This is this is a, a point I hit on a lot of these uh, these mini plus Sentai builds where I'm kind of just zoned out and I'm like, okay, I know how this goes. Let's just finish this. Oh uh, yeah. I think it's time for some wheels. What do you say? Unlike the Tiger, we don't have to slot little individual wheels in. We just can put in a nice axle and two tire assembly there. And uh, this part, this part is new to me because I believe these are the these are the crotch pieces. So we got to plug together some skirt armor and uh, enter a whole new world of pelvis, ladies and gentlemen. How much do you know about pelvis? I don't know much at all. I'm ready to learn. And I think that's the important thing here. I think I had to push these in a bit more too. I'm ready to become uh, a pelvis apprentice. The apprentice is on TV, by the way. Celebrity apprentice. Gotta respect that they're doing it for charity. Anyway, our pelvis is forming up. Let's move along. Oh hey, what's up? It's some white plastic. I haven't seen that for a little while. Saw tons of it a few minutes ago, but... We are back to the realm of white plastic. Things are slipping and sliding together quite happily. I'm, uh, I'm trying this uh, thing where I just set up all the parts and then do one filming uh, film through to be redundant. Doesn't help that my lighting is both poor and the parts are both black. <laughs> <laughs> At least the majority of the parts, but this is a bit of a proof of concept video, so please let me know what you think of it in the comments and how I can improve it outside of, you know, get better lighting. Time for some sequential build-off. Alright, here we go. Uh, huh, I'm already screwing this up. Okay, here we go. We want the major crotch nub on top, and kapow, and... Kapow, and boom, header on, and we've got us the Gosei snake, who can kinda, kinda sorta bend over here. Uh, that's about it. Oh well. Oh, hey, wait, what's this? Oh! Oh, nice. Okay. So you get some more bend in there. Let's uh, look at the assembled bunch. Now I'll be the first to say this is not super exciting looking, but and then again, they are stickerless and unpainted right now. When you put your stickers on them, they should look a lot cooler than this. Um, I'm going to be painting these up to my minimal degree. I might even use a top coat this time, I don't know. But let's try some test footage 
because I do like the mechanisms uh, in play on these guys. It's a, a nicely solid little bit of kit. I mean, this is this is what I believe the, those in the uh, mini plug industry would call the uh, the rough fitting or the test fitting. Uh, this is where you see if the fruits of your labor are indeed fruit or uh, or some kind of horrible vegetable. Is that a proper metaphor? I'm not sure. But anyway, uh, I am liking the way this feels. I think this will uh, be a bit of a success here. Aside from when I pull pieces apart. And we got some transformation goodness. All the joints are feeling tight. Doesn't feel like I need to do any super glue treatment to anything. And that's always good. Uh, doing super glue treatment, you know, it's easy. But at the same time, it's more busy work. I do like that the headers can swivel. So you can uh, get some proper elbow joints going on here. Alright, let's do some flips. Blam. Uh, I will agree with some of the reviews on YouTube I've watched already that the head's a little bit finicky. Uh, it likes to come out more than it likes to do anything else, but hey, now we got us an unpainted Gose great. Uh, I've just got to do something about this uh, with some Gundam markers, some Tamiya, some uh, paint brushes. So this leads me to my final thing, which is, what do you guys do with your sprues after you're done? I just throw them out, but do you guys like melt these down? Do you cut them up into into kit bashing parts? Let me know. And let me know uh, what you thought about this video, aside from the horrible lighting here in this hotel. Uh, I was going for a bit of a proof of concept with this one. Uh, I'd like to I'd like to videotape when I build things, because I, I have fun building things, and I have more fun when I have a camera on me. So. I'm going to try one of these again, maybe when I get the Loto Twins from the uh, the Gundam HG Unicorn, etc, etc, because those are also kind of simple. I mean, not as simple as this little guy, but we'll see. And I might try videotaping myself while I do the paint on this. Anyway, thanks for watching uh, this Let's Build, or as I've decided to call it, this V-Build, because uh, we already got Let's Play, and... Let's face it, I am not as talented as some of those great Let's Players out there, like Late Blight and her crappiness. So I'll catch you all later here at the Toronto Hotel. Go say, dropkick.